I'm pretty much ready. She's at doing mic check. Hello? I'm gonna. Huh? I'm I'm ready whenever. She's ready. Okay. Hi everyone, thank you for having me. My name is Angela Renee Chase. Uh, I'm co-owner and operator of Paseo Farmers Market and Flora Bodega in the Paseo Arts District. Um, we're locate, we're housed in the same building. We have our own spot now. Uh, we're on 30th and Walker. Um, thank you, Scissor Tell, for having me. So we have a spread of produce that overlaps with uh, some of the same local vendors. Uh, a and H, Looney Farms, we miss them. Uh, Cedar Springs, uh, we're gonna start with building a salad so it can kind of marinate in the vinegar, the dressing that I brought. I tried not to bring too many condiments today, so I toned it down. Um, and then we'll move into basically doing a, a simple like breakfast brunch and it'll be with eggs and pork chops and cast iron. So first we're gonna start with turnips. I know a lot of people, I, I put them in the uh, mashed potatoes that I made. I roast them, smashed them in there, but a lot of people roast them. We're gonna eat a lot of this stuff raw actually today. And then, Mary was nice enough to get us a cheap knife from Super Cow. These are usually like three dollars or like two to three, five dollars there. I love these knives. They're super thin, but they're great for doing produce like butter. And then I brought a, an extra bowl. Some, a lot of people here garden. The farmers uh, use natural fertilizers and compost, organic compost. So I do that at my house. So we have a bowl here that we're gonna put all our scraps in. On a lot of roots, you don't have to remove entirely the top part of the greens. A lot of times I'll leave them in, even on carrots, different root vegetables. Um, many people cook beet greens, but you don't have to entirely remove the top. Turnips to me are pretty much like a spicy potato. I'm, sure a lot of people avoid them still. We got the chill music today. <laughs> okay. We'll call this again. Radishes, the same. Radishes are spicy, but they also help your body temperature when it's hot outside. They actually help regulate and bring your body temperature down. These are from Looney Farms. Thanks, Carrie.
I would do onions right now, but I don't feel like having burning eyeballs for the whole rest of the demo. I love cutting them, but I cry every time. Um, so we have a cucumber. You could do cucumbers a lot of different ways. Uh, sometimes to make it easy, I'll just split it down the middle and then take some of the skin off. And so, this skin's actually pretty tender, so it probably wouldn't be that bad. Then you can just like slice it into coins or take it a step further and just at least half that and then double slice. Cutting vegetables. Uh, if the skin can be actually kind of tough, uh, this just kind of makes it easier to like bite through it with ha without having like the rubbery string in your mouth. But these are pretty tender actually. any of this tastes good just eating it raw but like I said we got it prepped so we can dress it and let it sit in its own juices for a second the only other thing I want to add are snap peas these are great for just snacking on but I like to cut them a little bit in like diagonal shapes and they're just they're cute that way because you can see inside them and they're not just like coins this is a great texture you can finish a dish like this in there. These snap peas are from A&H. They're actually located uh, not far from here. So urban farm. Amy. Amy and HR and the babies. All right. And do salt and pepper. This is actually herb already. Uh, this dressing is a family recipe from Laver's, so it's an Italian family from Krebs, Oklahoma. Uh, they've been in operation, I think, this year, 75 years now. Uh, Sam, uh, grandpa's actually passed away not that long ago, uh, so Matteo, the grandson, is the main cheese maker now. Uh, so we just stopped by recently. We sell these products at the store, but we like went on a trip. I would say that's you should go there if you haven't. It's the best sandwiches. But it's a cute shop. So we're just going to use this. So they did all the work for us. And see what I have. Okay, so we're gonna let that sit. Um, as far as cooking today, everything's gonna be done in one pan, so we're just gonna start and build up everything out of the same pan. I know like some people joke about like cast iron, like, oh, I don't wash my cast iron, bro. Um, we're gonna do a little bit of that today, but <laughs> we're just gonna keep stepping up. Yeah, you can use soap on them, you can wash them. I just wouldn't use chemical soap, because that 
not very good for you. It also uh, can lead to actual mild food poisoning. So if you have non-toxic soap, you can go ahead and do that or just rinse it and wipe it. So I usually just bring up a pan dry hot. Even if, if there's a little bit of oil in there, that's fine, but I'm just gonna let it sit for a second. And we're just gonna do eggs and cast iron basic. And thank you, Mary, for getting this little burner. Since it's kind of windy, it might like things might cook a little bit slower today. Uh, I call this the Holy Trinity. Is go ahead and salt the pan. People salt, put salt in food, finish with salt. Uh, I salt the pan first because it creates basically like a saline, so your food doesn't stick to it. That I mean, the whole point of like the nonstick is this accomplishes the same effect. For the Holy Trinity, it's usually good to have, start with the salt and have at least, you can do maybe one fat, but I usually do two fats, I do oil and I'm gonna do butter. So we're bringing this up, probably fine. This olive oil is from Sika Hills in California. It's actually an uh, indigenous owned uh, orchard and um, business. They have nuts, olive oil, they do balsamics. They do an elderberry balsamic. We like their products. And then we're gonna use local butter. What was it? Yeah, basically like salt and two fats okay. is, is the best way. Cause it could be, yeah, it, I mean, grapeseed oil, there's different things. Uh, like say if you wanna keep like bacon fat or something too. So this is like uh, saved animal fat. So I'm like, here we go. Um, these eggs have actually been out like for a minute, so we'll see. I can do a couple of different types of eggs. If I have a, if I bust a yolk, I actually create an egg that I call like busted eggs. So it's kind of like a fried egg, but we'll just see. One. So yeah, the eggs already have salt involved. You could salt them later if you want, but I wouldn't. I just start peppering them. I don't add more salt at this point. see this it's moving <laughs> so right now I'm swirling my eggs around it's best to like keep it hot if you're gonna flip it so I'm gonna go ahead the other thing so people are like oh you can't cook eggs in cast iron and then the, there's like a whole nother wave that you know people are like you can't flip eggs in cast iron so we're about to do that I busted one, but I flipped him. So it is doable. I feel like Teflon, you know, there was always pans before that. You can pretty much do the same thing in a metal, like a steel pan. Uh, sometimes I don't scrub those too much. I let carbon build up in them. Um, but you can, I think it's just like on your own, just like mess, I mean, if you cook, just keep going. So this, we're gonna flip it again. So this one pretty much is a busted egg. I'm gonna set it aside. You can wipe it out. There's not really that much in here. It came out pretty smooth. 
we have our pork chops. They uh, have been out also. I would recommend like letting meat sit out for at least like 30 minutes to an hour. If it's in a hot place, that's a little bit different. So maybe at least kind of cool. Uh, I have an iron stomach, so I'm usually not afraid of meat like that. But you're just gonna have a cold center. So more olive oil. I'm gonna put gloves on. The, these pork chops are from ReFarm. Uh, we love their products. I think sometimes they're at the market. If they're here today, I didn't see them yet. They're bone in, they have some fat involved. So you can use whatever pork chop you want. Uh, growing up, like my dad would do pork chops. I think he did medallions. I was thinking about like, what kind of pork chops was that? Because they were usually just like circles. Pretty sure he was doing medallions. I still have this, it's still burning. I know some people eat pork chops for breakfast and then other people wouldn't really like think about that. Um, this one, we're gonna season it. I have dried sage that's local. It's from uh, like our own gardens and then dried. You can just like cut it up with scissors after you dry it if you have the big leaves. So I'm adding this to it just like how it's the same herb that goes in the sausage. So it's gonna give that a sausage flavor towards the end. Get some more gloves. So burning pan. I'm like, burning table there we go that pan is pretty hot um, so be careful I have a lid we're gonna cover it or you can like set a lid like offset if it's gonna splash everywhere um, I recommend also Usually I try to get like some of the liquid off so it isn't like explosive. Usually when you have something that's popping a lot like bacon, I've noticed like some bacon can be packaged with a lot of liquid. So that's what's like exploding is all the water. It's just like literally exploding in the grease. So, so we put that on a hot flame, uh, raging and then the best way to time this, about two minutes on a piece of meat of each side. We're not gonna cover it. I hope this is fun. You can move it around. Uh, I think that helps like like cook it evenly for one thing. Um, the wind right now is blowing this, so it's probably hotter on the back end. But if you put a piece of meat down, like fish can be a little bit different. There's certain cuts, but like when it's this big, go ahead and just move it around. We're almost at one minute. I'm like, I'm hungry already. Thirty seconds, twenty, pretty much. It's 
good. We're at two minutes. So you want to see this side. So, I mean, it's pretty red. I feel like even when, like, cooking breads and certain meats, like, the reddish brown, uh, some things, you can burn it if you want, do whatever you want, but that's pretty cooked. Two minutes, going on two minutes again. I feel like we're seasoning the table as we're doing this. about 40 seconds. I'm gonna go ahead and tear off the sides. If it was like a big, more like primal cut of meat, sear all the sides two minutes. <laughs> but we don't need to do that right now. Then I'm gonna flip it back on its original side, the first side I started with, and cut the heat. All right. Another vendor um, that is here, um, we sell their products also. You have some pretty precious bread. You have Signature. Um, you have multiple vendors. This one, what we have is the milk bread from Bowie. Uh, my family likes this. I've given it to my brother, my sister-in-law. It seems very unsuspecting, but we're going to make toast with it. So usually with the pork chops, even like sitting in there, that would be like maybe another two minutes. Covered. And we're doing that because the other way would, to finish it would be throwing it in the oven. We're not doing that. And actually, let's just skip to another project. I'm going to make potato cakes before toast. This recipe is from my family. It's you use leftover mashed potatoes from the dinner before. So we would keep those, they, they would be chilled so they would stabilize in the fridge, get them back out the next morning. I did uh, sweet potatoes from uh, Rod Acadian Farms and then I mashed in uh, the roasted turnips. The turnips are actually from uh, 
Prairie Earth. They're like just located north of like the Cowboy Hall of Fame. Let me get the fork. So about maybe this amount of potatoes, two eggs or like one giant egg. I'm using this so uh, I would I would crack an egg in a bowl before I know like you see people like do a spread of like all the ingredients, but I think just so you don't accidentally have to fish out like a shell. So I'll do one and maybe like a little egg. Mix that around. Our pork chops probably done. You're gonna let it rest. And then Yeah, most cultures, I feel like all over the world, always had something for food waste. Or you can just eat mashed potatoes again the next day. <laughs> this also has garlic in it, if you want to put herbs. The other ingredients is add egg and then add flour, so I brought some organic flour. Don't make anything perfect. So that pan's off right now. This I wouldn't like probably cook as a rager on high heat. Even though I'd be tempted to start these that way, but with the sweet potato, they would just have um, burned sugar flavor. Same thing, I'm gonna leave that in there. It's like pork chop, salt it. And then I feel like this is an experiment with the sweet potatoes. We're gonna do some little patties. Patience, don't burn them. There's some food that I get really impatient about, and I'm like, I feel like I don't know how to cook all of a sudden because of that.
their pork. And with the potato cakes, when they're finished, I brought ketchup. Um, this Marina's is really good. It actually tastes like tomatoes. Um, I've had like real ketchup before. I feel like most all of us have. And then eating this, I've, I've been pretty sad when I get like burgers to go and I have like the little ketchup packages. Like that's already like reset me to where I'm like, ah. And that one is a little bit sweet, but still tastes like tomatoes. So yeah, these are like the same color, like the golden, like brown, red color. You can take them as far as you want. And then while that's doing its thing on the other side, we'll like prep the rest of this salad. Uh, I feel like people, like my roommates and then friends, uh, are used to a lot of solids. So basically, I made a type of solid in here, but we're going to keep it going. So it'll be like a salad in a salad. And then a lot of times, I'll just like super herb bomb them. I feel like if you want to grow herbs, just like put as much as you want in there. They're just as good as lettuce. This one might be too sandy to use today. This is parsley, dill, we have cilantro, and then I have uh, two different like lettuce mixes, one from Looney Farms and then A&H. If any of this is sandy, we probably can't eat it unless you want to eat the dirt. It's good for you. I didn't hear you. What does it mean when it's sandy? When it's sandy? Uh, probably because it needs to be like triple washed like lettuce. <laughs> I can pick one of these up so you can see the color. So it's like a potato pancake. As I smash it up. Pork chop should be ready. Uh, I'm going to turn this down. Go ahead and cut this. I'm going to use a different knife.
So yeah, we let this rest and then I'm gonna cut it. Should be like slightly pink in the middle so that it's not overcooked. I like the fat bits at the end. I'm sorry if uh, you don't really eat meat, but. Beautiful. <laughs> So we're going to add that to our breakfast plate. And then finish the salad. Oh yeah, let's do toast. Oh my goodness. I want to save this grease again. I'm going to eat it at home. And then we're going to go back to our butter. Our Texas toast. Don't tell Bowie. <laughs> Get that going. You can leave uh, your salad if you want it still big leaves. I like to rough cut it. Yeah, I'm gonna break it down at least a little bit. So yeah, pretty much it's like a salad and a salad and a salad that just keeps going on. Salad, salad. If there's zucchini or squash, uh, any of uh, that type of fruit, vegetable, uh, also you can grate that down. I, a lot of people don't think about putting that in a salad, but it, you can do it like a coleslaw style. It's actually pretty good raw. The same thing, just like grate it down. I would like leave it in uh, rice vinegar is good, whatever, uh, white vinegar, champagne, uh, salt. Uh, same thing, like we could just, I didn't bring a grater, but we could add that into this if we wanted to. That, check Bowie's bread. So that's her bread, looks like French toast. I want some more butter though. I'm made of butter if you didn't know that. keep it going. So, I mean, after this bread, we literally did all of that in that one pan. So, did it. I'm going to cut the heat on this. And then I'll taste this. Tomatoes. We're almost there. Should I put onions in it? Save the tears for last. These are cherry tomatoes from Cedar Spring, so I'm just like quartering them. Just so it's like easy, like I can eat this salad like in a spoonful. You can take the greens off or not, sometimes they eat them. I do that with strawberries. Mary has to taste test the salad. Okay, our toast is done. I brought some honey. 
Hoza's here. They're here like every other week. So this vendor, you can get their product. Um, one of our, our owners, like this is her favorite honey. I like all of them. Um, so we're gonna put this over the toast and call it good. Do jelly, whatever you want. Growing up, uh, like not realizing until I got older that I've been eating a lot of German foods um, with my family, my grandfather. So we would do like pumpernickel toast. I don't know if Shelly remembers this. Um, and it would be like peanut butter and honey. <laughs> like that was the, the toast we'd eat. And I was like a little kid, like I was down with it. But we are done with breakfast. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if anybody wants to check out this spread, you can come up here. Yeah. I don't know what the rules are about tasting anything. I don't care if you want to taste anything. I don't really want to cut an onion right now either. But. So I just did that actually in a metal pan. I just like kind of like quarter them how I did this and just like saute them and set them aside. And then because the potatoes, as I, the way we do potatoes is uh, like for a potato salad or anything, we call it salted potatoes. So we like heavily salt the water and then boil them. So as soon as the potatoes were done, I like threw in also I was sauteing the turnips and just mashed it all together while it was soft enough to do that. And I left the skins on. Anybody want to taste? Little, uh, taste one of them potato cakes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you might not like it because it's a sweet potato. You're like, I know what it tastes like. The uh, Mirasaki. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think if you want to do a. Oh, yeah. Name, recipe, where to find you. <laughs> recipe. Your name, um, like what you want to call it, the breakfast thing. Oh, where I would. Find you. Uh, yeah, my name once again is Angela Renee Chase. I'm co-owner of Paseo Farmers Market in Flora Bodega. Um, we're located on 30th and Walker in the Paseo Arts District. Um, and then this is basically like a brunchy breakfast with a salad. <laughs>